Uh, so Canada played, a, a, as everyone knows, a, a major role during the Second World War. But a lot of the brains behind things and a lot of decisions were originated from this room. When Lady Laurier passed away in 1921, she bequeathed the house to the next Liberal Prime Minister, who was William Lyon Mackenzie King. King did extensive renovations to the house and moves in in uh, 1923. Uh, King was our longest serving Prime Minister for almost 22 years. And what's unique about this room we're in right now is that it's exactly the way it was left and everything you see in this room is authentic. And this was his desk. This is where he worked out of for uh, not just during the war, but years before the war. Uh, he preferred this room to the parliaments or the East Block or working in his offices uh, downtown. He said people bothered him too much. There was too much time spent going to and from work. So he preferred um, some of his cabinet, his secretaries to come to Laurier House and work out of this third floor, uh, including this, uh, this uh, library. Um, so the war cabinet during the Second World War um, uh, worked out of this room uh, at, at times. Now the back wing of the third floor would have had secretaries, uh, cabinet members, so the other wing there was people just back and forth, back and forth, there was a hustle and bustle of movement and work uh, right out of this uh, third floor, the attic of the house. So you can imagine the uh, dignitaries and heads of state that would have come here during, uh, during that World War II period from uh, Roosevelt, Eisenhower, Churchill was working out of this room, the royal family were here as well in 39. Um, it's endless and we have them all here collected in this uh, guest book. There's Winston Churchill. So let me see if I can kind of keep my fingers on these. There's King George the Sixth. There's Franklin D. Roosevelt, Hyde Park. Well, a lot of Canadians know that King was in, uh, believed in spiritualism and practiced in, in spiritualism from, uh, from having mediums uh, look into a crystal ball to he himself reading tea leaves. But at no time did King use this to run the nation or make any decisions of, of any kind. It was more of a, a comfort. He was a, a man who was a bachelor, he was alone, uh, so he would use the crystal ball to communicate with his loved ones who had passed away. To open the momentous Quebec conference, the Prime Ministers of Britain and Canada arrived to meet the President of the United States. The Right Honourable Winston Churchill and the Right Honourable William Lyon Mackenzie King motor to the Chateau Frontenac, scene of the parley. King was an excellent war leader in that he picked the right cabinet. He picked Ralston, he picked, uh, he picked the right ministers to do the job. Uh, he trusted in that cabinet, he trusted in his generals, he, uh, he let them lead. So when we look at the rationing, recycling, the home front and the whole total effort, not just of soldiers but of all civilians to, to, to pitch into this war effort, uh, that was directed from him and supported uh, by his cabinet and a direction quietly coming out of this room. 